everybody, it's Dee here, once again for your wildcard Wednesday adventure. Um, still at home working from my home studio. I think it might be a while like this, uh, but that suits me fine because it means I can get things done and I can uh, plan projects in advance, so it's all good for me. Anyway, my name's Dee. I usually teach this class at the Attenborough Arts Centre, which is the Arts Centre for Leicester University. Um, and for many of you, you won't have been able to get there because it's been closed. If you're first years and you're freshers, you won't have even gone in, which is a real shame. Um, they will be opening to the public whenever they're allowed to over the summer, probably. Uh, so you have to keep your eyes peeled. But um, if you're going to be going into your second year or third year next year, it will be back up and running as every other kind of venue and art gallery like that uh, whenever they're allowed to. So um, anyway, uh, hopefully you will have picked up your craft boxes from reception at your halls of residence and uh, we're going to take a look inside and see what you're going to be making this week with me. So I'm just going to turn the camera around and we'll have a look. Okay, so uh, the extras that you'll need this week are water and a pencil or pen. And inside your box you will find a paintbrush a tub of paint, a pair of scissors, a plastic apron, some plastic gloves and a packet like this which says pop bandage on it. Now, this is a messy project, so beware. If you want to cover up your desk with more than just your plastic apron, with some old newspaper or old magazines or something that you don't mind getting dirty, then I would go ahead and do that now. I am going to ooh, just get rid of the box for a second. We're going to actually use the box this week. So I'm going to um, cover my table with my plastic apron what you'll find is you can open it right out like this and sit your water on it up there and your tools okay and I'm going to put my gloves on now or do I need them yet no not quite yet Right, what we're going to do this week, folks, is I want you to get your box back. Um, let's bring the box back in. We're going to use the box itself. Now, I'm going to make one of these. If you want to make more, you can and you'll get the idea once we get going what it is we're doing. So first of all, what I want you to do is we're going to cut along this side. So this is the lid. To your box and I want you to cut the lid off. So get your scissors. I mean you might find it easier just to tear it. Those I'm going to use these ones. I'm going to cut down here. It doesn't have to be neat and I'm just going to tear that last bit. Oh, she says, oh, I'm just going to, actually, I'll tell you what, it's easier to go like this, get there. Okay, so you can put the base to one side. We're going to be using this. And I want you to cut along this line now. So this was the, the shorter flap for the box. So we're going to cut along here. So if you do the same. OK. 
okay now you can use this one to make another one of what we're going to do so put that inside the box that we're not using and we're going to use this one so what I want you to do now is I want you to cut along this section we're going to cut so you've got your flat base and you've got your two flaps here and we're going to cut one of the flaps off okay right so what I want you to do now is you're going to get your pencil and I want you to draw a shape now, the shape that I'm going to draw, you're more than welcome to copy. But if you want to do a shape of your own, any random shape, you can. So I'll show you, I'll tell you what, I'll show you on this side what you could do. So you could do something like, um, you could do a simple shape like this. Or, so, you know, you can do any shape. I think I'm going to go... Uh, let's see, we want, I, ooh, it's a bit hard to do it on this, it'd be easier to um, cut it. Basically, I'll tell you what we're making, shall I? We're making a, a candle holder, which is should be able to sit on the wall. Okay, it's a wall sconce. So I'm going to do like this, and then I'm going to have it coming down here like this. Now I can't provide you with a candle, but you know those little tea light candles that you can get? They're kind of short with a metal base on, that's what the idea of these is. This is, and uh, so we're going to go to here, and then on the base I want you to do something like this. It doesn't have to be round, you could do it square, but I'm going to do that. So that's my shape, look, can you see that? Okay, now we're going to cut round this. Actually, I'm going to just swap this again. sides will be similar but you know me I don't measure these things I just eyeball it as I like to say if you want to do this very neat and precise then you can of course measure it all out uh, you know I just do things freehand but that's my way it is a handmade object after all Okay, then I want you to cut this disc. Now, if you wanted that to be neater, you could draw around something. Um, I haven't got anything to hand. I think that'll be too big. What's that? No, I'm just going to draw around this shape and hope for the best. Like 
so okay so that's nearly the same let's just trim that bit okay there we have it right now we can get start getting messy so if you throw away all these bits get rid of them and I want you to now put your gloves on because we're going to get messy with the plaster yay this is a bit we like isn't it <laughs> right so gloves on uh, plastic apron on the table let's cut this open Now this is where it starts to get very messy, which is why you've got that on the table or some newspaper or something. Okay, let's take it out of the bag. So what I want you to do is uh, we're going to cut a few strips off. It doesn't really matter. Don't make them too short, but you don't want it too long either. I'm going to do it like this. I want it to be longer than the shape, but we're going to be wrapping it round anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. Um, and I also want a couple of lengths cut, and then I want you to cut that in half. So we've got some thinner strips as well, okay? Like that. And let's do another one like that. And we might even cut one of those in half. We'll see when we go, as we go along, we can always cut some more if we need those shapes. Right, now get your spare bit of um, pop rock put it to one side because you don't want it to get wet and if we put these pieces to one side as well what I want you to do is we'll start off with a, a large piece and um, I want you to get your water you're going to plunge the whole lot into the water okay and then I just want you to lay it onto the shape that we've just cut onto the cardboard now we're going to be making it so it sits like this so i think it's probably best if we start off having the little shelf where the tea light is going to sit but what you can do is you get your scissors and we're going to cut cut the uh, pop rock and then you just fold it round like this underneath and fold that little bit round there at the top we'll do the same we'll do a split there with the scissors and then I want you to wrap that round like that fold it over at the back so the back now looks like that Obviously, you've got a brown box. I'm using a white one because that's what I've got at home. Now, what you can do is you run your fingers over the pop rock with a bit of water on and it fills in the plaster. It spreads the plaster out that's soaked into the bandage. All the, all the time I'm holding this at that angle. Can you see? Because I, I want that to dry with that shape already there. This starts to dry very, very quickly. This piece will already be starting to dry out. Um, yeah. Okay, let's I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Look, I'm going to put my water there. I'm going to put that there and rest it against it. Oh, see, very clever. Uh, right, let's get another piece. See, I'm looking at this and thinking, what shape do I need? So I'm going to get a piece and I'm going to cut it in half down the middle because I want another longer piece. 
I'm going to stick it in the water and this time I'm going to lay the piece over that edge and I'm overlapping it because I'm going to wrap that piece around. So tuck that in there and let that flop over the end. And then pick it up, get your scissors. It's important we keep that bit there like that. Get your scissors and snip in that line. Okay, so you can just fold that bit round there. And then I want you to fold those edges round like that. Okay, again, get your finger in there in the water and rub over the little, over your pop rock bandage, sort of filling in the gaps. Right, so we're going to continue to do that. I'm going to do that down there now on that bit. I'm going to put it in the water. And I'm going to lay that on there, she says. I'm going to tuck it in and I'm going to drape that over the top. Okay, so I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to cup it so that my shape my little shelf stays and I'm going to just turn it round and snip, snip in there and fold that round. So you don't have to, obviously you probably can't put these on the wall in your halls of residence, but if we make it like this with this little shelf, you can have it on your desk be so pretty of course you must never leave a burning candle on if you're going to leave your room you you know you've got to be sensible about this we don't want any major accidents going on doesn't matter about that i mean you can fill the back in but you can always just paint the back when we come to that bit so i've got this section here look there that i'm going to do next so I'm going to use a, I'm going to use another long strip because the more you have on, the stronger the whole piece is going to be in the end. So let's get that in the water and I'm going to lay the, woo, hang on, hang on, hang on. I want that to fold over the, the little shelf unit and I want it to go around here. So hmm, I think I'm going to just do it on that side there like that and mold it round with my hands because with this little piece here I can always add a another piece on the more of this you add on the stronger your end result will be And I'm going to just do that little section there with a small piece that I cut and I'm going to wrap that round, drape it over, wrap it, push it down with my fingers. You can always bring that over or you can smooth that down the back. Like that. Okay, now I want to reinforce this base, the shelf. So I'm going to get another piece and I'm going to cut it in half. Get it in the water. It makes a really satisfying sound when it comes out of the water like Rice Krispies. Snap, crackle and pops. Right, let's just make a little snip there and a snip there and then I want that to go round like that and that's going to fold underneath because obviously you're putting a lot of water into the card it does get a bit 
uh, floppy. And I've got another section here. I'm just going to lay another piece over the top. Like that. Slightly overlapping. Wrap it round underneath. And I'm just going to put that down. I'm going to smooth that over. Yeah, I've already decided actually this is going to be a desk piece, not a wall piece. Because you could, you're not allowed to put stuff on your walls anyway, so it's a silly idea. But you can put these on your desk or your windowsill or somewhere um, like that or you can light a candle so you can just carry on now adding and reinforcing it you can put some on both sides uh, I'm going to put it like that wrap it up like a baby As I said, the more you add, the stronger it's going to be. Uh, I think I'll cut that in. I'll cut that in three quarters, like that. And I want you to continue doing this. Until you've at least used up what we cut off. You've still got a fair bit left. So as I said or on the roll, so if you want to make another one with uh, some more of the box, once you've made this one, you'll know how to do it. And you could do one in another shape or you could do a pair that are identical and sit them either end of your desk, which would be really pretty. Um, so I'm just going to use that. I'm going to put that there like that. It doesn't really matter where you put it. Just blend it all in. Let's cut some more up. I think I'm going to do another narrow strip. And cut that in half. Oh, it makes a great sound. I'm going to do another one there. I bet you can buy those um, candles. Once the shops have all opened, you see, you can go into somewhere like Tiger Tiger and get those um, lovely tea light candles from there so I'm going to do this right but look so what I'm going to do is make a snip here and here and then I'm going to wrap that, wrap that round get some water on that rub it in Let me turn it down so you can see, like that. And you can see when you rub your finger over it, it, it fills in and makes the surface sort of smooth. But we're going to paint over it and that will cover up a lot as well. Well, that one's not very pointed anymore. Oh, I think I... You silly woman. I think I must have squished my point. Oh, I'll make that one a bit softer. There we go. That's better. That looks a bit more even. Um, right. That is the most important bit down there. 
that is going to take the strain, your fold. So you really do want to reinforce that. I think what I'm going to do is turn it over and I'm going to put some on that join because once it's dry, it will um, set really hard. OK, and that is the, the point that if we cut, cut that down the middle, I want that to go over the join like this on the back. And then I'm going to cut down there. There we go. Then if I flip it over, I can, before it dries, I suppose you could do this with your paintbrush actually. It's worried about that join, I don't want it to break. I might put another piece stripped down there just to make sure it's doubly, doubly strong. Lay that in the middle like that. That will do the job. Then I'm going to cut it like so. That round there, that round there, and the same on that side. Cut it. Okay, so what I want you to do now, you can carry on putting on your layers if you want, or you can save what you've got to make another one. When you finish putting your layers on, I want you to set this somewhere warm to dry out, like on top of a radiator, uh, in the, on the windowsill, somewhere where it gets in the sun. Um, you, you're going to leave, or if you have a hairdryer, and you want to use the hairdryer on it to dry it out. Um, that's what I want you to do next before we come back and do the next section. Okay. Right, so let's have a look. Now, I've left my um, piece to harden by the radiator. So it's nice and hard now. So if you clear away your extra pieces, which you haven't used, if you've got any left, that is, and you can make another one, as I said before. And we want to bring in the paint. And our gold paint. This is lovely paint, nice and thick. And of course, when the piece is bone dry like this, um, it's much easier to spread the paint about. Because I quite like, I'll make sure I put enough paint in that you could probably get two layers of paint done on your piece.
go through with your paintbrush in little circles like this and it gets the paint into the little holes. I'm going to paint the underside as well, just because I can. And when I paint the back, I probably will paint the back. But my advice would be, um, I didn't do very much on the back. I just folded the um, pop rock round. But you could have, you could make it much neater by putting your pop rock all the way on the back as well of the piece. So it's one very neat. Well, I should sort of thought of that before. Um, and then if it's not sitting against a wall, it doesn't matter if you see the back because it will be all neat and tidy and painted up. Unlike mine, which looks like that. <laughs> I should have thought about that, shouldn't I, when I was doing it. But if I paint it all then it should kind of blend in. You get the idea anyway. So you can continue painting this. I'm going to do it quickly now. Go right to the edges. So if you have um, something pointy and sharp to hand, um, I haven't got anything here, but if you had something, you could, when it was wet, you could put a hole through from the front to the back, then you could fit it on your wall. Put a, but as I said, I know that you put, you're not allowed to put things on your walls in the halls of residence, so I think this is a better alternative anyway. But say you were, you know, you knew you were moving out and you thought in future that you did want to um, have it as a wall sconce rather than a desk sconce, then you could put a hole in so that you can get it onto the wall. Okay, that will do for now. Oh, oh, look at that, where my fingers were. Let's pull the paint off. Beware of that, folks. That's why you need to wear gloves. Okay, and there we have it. Your golden, let's put, don't forget to put your paintbrush in the water because if you don't, it will go rock hard and you can't reuse it. Same with the paint. If you stay, if you pop the lid back on, you'll be able to, if you've got any paint left, you'll be able to reuse that for weeks to come because it stays very um, moist in the pot. So there you have it. There's your beautiful golden sconce and this is the candle I was talking about this is your tea light candle which you can buy quite easily in a lot of high street shops or online and they're, they're relatively safe for a candle because they're kept in the metal case so I don't think you'd have a problem having that in your room and look it just sits on there perfectly
So you can imagine if you had that on the wall in your house, it would look quite pretty if you had a, a couple of them side by side. Um, I'm really pleased with that. I think it's lovely. And I just wanted to show you, if you wanted to do um, more, obviously I cut that piece off, if you remember, that narrow piece. And I was thinking that, you know, you could really, if you cut one end off, and use that as your table for your candle. You can do some really fancy shapes. Let's just put that there for now. You could do something like, um, so if you had, whoops, oh, you know how awful it is when you draw on it. It's all bobbly. Um, so you could do something like this. And then you'd have your round bit here and you could put a hole in there and then cut that out so you'd have another one um, so you can make as many as you like I mean if you run out of the uh, pop rock you don't even have to use that you could just literally cut your cardboard out and paint it the only problem would be that flap works quite well when it's got the um, pop rock, the plaster, as it heal, as it dries and it goes really hard. So I'm not quite sure how to get around that. But you can probably buy, you can buy this is what they use online. Sometimes it's called mod rock. No, it's not. Pop rock. Uh, if you put plaster bandage in, it comes up. Anyway, you, I'm sure you'll be able to find it on the internet if you wanted to get some more of it. Uh, but there is plenty plenty there to make at least another one. Um, so let me just turn the camera around. There we have it, our golden sconce candle holder. Um, I think that's going to look great, don't you, on your desk. It catches the light when you light the candle in the evening. When it's dark outside, it will just glow up on the back there. It would be really pretty. So, um, yeah, enjoyed that one. Um, thank you for joining me this week. Um, and have a look out because there'll be more exciting adventures in the weeks to come. Uh, creative adventures, of course, with me. Um, and, yeah, what do I normally say? Stay safe, stay well, and above all, stay creative. So this is Dee saying goodbye for this week and hopefully see you next time. Okay, bye.